Hello students, my name is Gargi and in this lecture, we will revise our book First Flight. So, for the first chapter, which is Glimpses of India, it alone has three parts. So, we will study it in different parts. Glimpses of India, a baker from Goa. Now, in this chapter, like, lesson begins how the narrator's elders often recall the time when Goa was under the rule of Portuguese. पहले जब पोर्चुगीज के अंडर गोवा हुआ करता था उस टाइम पे बेकर्स की वैल्यू बहुत ज्यादा होती थी दे टॉक हाउ इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ बेकर्स इज स्टिल मेंटेन्ड इन देयर विलेजेस इवन आफ्टर द पोर्चुगीज हैव लेफ्ट और पोर्चुगीज के जाने के बाद भी कितनी ज्यादा उनकी वैल्यू है अभी भी अभी भी बेकर्स की बहुत ज्यादा वैल्यू है दे आर नोन एज पैडर्स इन गोवा और उन्हें क्या कहा जाता है अभी पैडर्स बोला जाता है दे आर नोन एज पैडर्स द बेकर्स दे आर नोन एज Padders in Goa, the mixers, molders, and their time-tested furnaces continue to serve the people of Goa with their famous bread loaves. और जो उनकी bread loaves हैं, वो बहुत ज़्यादा famous हैं. और they are time-tested furnaces, जो उनके furnaces हैं जिसमें वो बनती है. Their mixers, the molders, जैसे bread बनाने के लिए जो mixers और जो molders use होते हैं, वो अभी भी वहाँ पे हैं. It is possible that the original ones may not exist, but their profession is being continued by their sons. हो सकता है the earlier जो ancestors थे वो अब नहीं हैं, but their sons they are continuing that tradition. वो अभी भी उस tradition को आगे लेके आए हैं. The thud of their bamboo stick can still be heard in some parts of the village. And when they arrive, when the baker arrive in a particular region. It thuds its bamboo. It creates a sound that announces its arrival. के जो baker है वो अब आने वाला है वहाँ पे. The same uh, jingling thud would wake the narrator and his friends during their childhood days and would go running without brushing or washing their mouth properly. और जब narrator uh, when they wake up, जब उनकी नींद खुलती है, when they hear the, that Jungling sound, that thudding sound. They wake up and they run towards the baker. It was the maid servant of the house who collected the loaves while children sorted out the bread bang bangles for themselves. And the maids, the maid servants, they were supposed to bring the loaves to the house. And the children, they loved those bangles, the bread bangles, which were uh, specially made by the baker for the children. Bakery products have importance in the culture and traditions of Goa. Now, Goa का जो tradition है, उसमें bakery products की बहुत ज़्यादा importance है. On several occasions, they have a certain importance. Bowl or sweet bread. Uh, there is the sweet bread. It's called bowl. Is a part of marriage gifts, uh, cakes and bowl and hearts or coconut cookies are eaten at every Festival and the lady of the house prepares sandwiches at her daughter's engagement. Now, to prepare sandwiches, you need bread, and to prepare the all these sweets and all these bakery products, you need bread. That's why the baker was really important. It is still really important for Goa. Earlier bakers wore a unique frock, a knee length known as kabai, but during the narrative's childhood days, they wore a shirt and trousers of Length slightly shorter than the usual one. Okay, so they have a particular attire that they wear, and it's called kabai. But uh, when narrator was a child, in his days, in his childhood days, they wore a shirt and a trouser of length slightly shorter than the usual ones. Okay, it was uh, slightly shorter. थोड़ा सा जितना हम लोग normally पहनते हैं उससे थोड़ा सा shorter होता था उसका length. They generally collected their bills at the end of every month, and when the month ended, वो अपनी जितना भी bill होता था, they used to come and collect it. Bakery has continued to be a profitable profession, managing to keep their families joyous and prosperous. Bakery जो profession है, it it has always been a profitable profession, and they manage to keep their families very uh, prosperous and sufficient. Now, in this chapter, important questions uh, that could come are the occasions for which we require bread and uh, the arrival of the baker, 
how they arrived and how the children got excited because of the bread bangles so these are a few important questions that you should prepare our next chapter our next part of the glimpses of india is kurk now kurk is a place in karnataka and it's a very beautiful place it's said that kurk is a piece of heaven which was drifted apart from uh, the heaven the writer describes the hill station of kurk located in the western ghats in the state of karnataka it is located midway between bangalore and mangalore it's somewhere between mangalore and bangalore and it is the smallest district in karnataka the suitable time to visit kurk is from september to march september to march ke beech mein jo timing hota hai it's the best time to visit kurk The place is famous for coffee plantation and spices. यहाँ पे जो coffee और spices का plantation होता है, it's the best. It's known for its coffee plantation and spices. These are abundant rainforest which cover thirty percent of the area. इसका जो thirty percent area है, वो forest alone forest से ही covered है. The Kurgi men are brave warriors who are permitted to keep firearms without a license due to their trustworthiness. कूर्ग में सिर्फ और सिर्फ कूर्ग में ही है ये चीज कि वहां पे आप फायर आर्म्स कैरी कर सकते हो विदाउट अ लाइसेंस द वुमेन ऑफ कूर्ग आर प्रिटी कूर्ग इज ऑलवेज ऑल्सो नोन एज कोदवूज और कोदवू तो आर हिंदूज बाय रिलीजन बट देयर कस्टम्स डिफर फ्रॉम द दोज ऑफ मेन स्ट्रीम हिंदू दे आर हिंदूज बट देयर कस्टम्स आर डिफरेंट फ्रॉम आर्स द मेन स्ट्रीम हिंदू कस्टम्स दे डोंट फॉलो दैट दे मैरी विद इन देयर कम्युनिटी कोदबूज आर सेट टू बी ऑफ ग्रीक और अरेबिक डिसेंट नाउ देर आर फ्यू लेजेंड्स फ्यू स्टोरीज अबाउट देयर ओरिजिन वेदर इट इज ग्रीक और अरेबिक सम सोल्जर्स ऑफ एलेक्जेंडर आर्मी सेटल देयर so uh, for the greek origin it is said that alexander ki jo army thi they came there and when they couldn't go back they settled there and they married within the community and that's why it is said that the kurk the people of kurk they have a greek descent and for the arabic descent it is said that as the ethnic dress of the kodwus kuppia is similar to the arab garment kuffai it is said that maybe their ancestors were arabs or kurds so that's why the attire because of the attire they wear it is said that maybe their descent is arabic the river kaveri originates from kurk the fish named mahseer is found in the river many animals and birds like kingfisher langur squirrels and elephants can be spotted along the river there are uh, the wildlife is very rich there students relax in the serene atmosphere and also enjoy adventure sports like river rafting canoeing rappling mountain biking rock climbing and trekking so uh, because of the environment because of the uh, the there are a lot of uh, adventure sports that can be played there while trekking on the nature trails animals like macaque malabar squirrels langurs and slender loris can be spotted on the trees the major tourist attraction are brahmagiri hills nasir dham islands and bayakuppi tibetan settlements kur gives visitors a feel of india's diverse culture it gives you a very beautiful picture of how india has such diverse culture now from this chapter from this part of glimpses of india the important questions can be uh, why the kurk is supposed uh, to be so beautiful why is it called a piece of heaven and uh, the question from the descent the greek and the arabic descents and what adventurous sports can you do there when you get there so all these questions you can prepare from this part our next part is tea from assam and the story revolves around the infamous beverage tea telling us more about its history and discovery it begins from the scene where two friends pranjal and rajvi are set to go to assam so this chapter tea from assam is about two friends and they are going to assam 
to visit Pranjul's home. It's his hometown, and Rajveer is going there for the first time, and he's very excited about it. उसने first time देखा है इतना greenery and the tea plantation fields, all these. he has seen for the first time and pranjol he is not very excited about it because he was born and brought up there so it's uh, about rajveer being very excited and there are few uh, there are two legends about the tea rajveer is very excited on seeing such large plantations of trees but pranjol is unable to match the same level because he was born and brought up in assam only visiting there for the first time rajveer did a lot of study about how tea was discovered that is dated back to 2700 bc according to what he read it was first consumed in china and reach europe in the 16th century okay so these legends these are very important because uh, questions isme se bante hain so there are numerous stories as how it discovered one about a chinese emperor so there is this one legend is about the chinese emperor and one is about the buddhist monk the former liked the taste of it while the latter used it to get rid of sleep so uh, the legend that is related to the chinese emperor he used to boil water before drinking and some leaves some tea leaves uh, fell into the water and it gave it a certain flavor and when he drank it that is said to be the discovery of tea now for the buddhist monk when he was meditating uh, when he was trying to meditate he was feeling sleepy so he cut off his eyelids and threw them aside and with that 10 tea leaves 10 tea plants they grew and that's how it is said that tea was discovered so these two legends are important as they were having this discussion they reached their destination where pranjo's parents had come to receive them and take them to their tea gardens on their way they passed a cattle bridge and gave way to the truck filled with tea leaves which drew their attention to the fact that it was the second sprouting season when they reached there when they were there it was the second sprouting season rajveer indeed did a lot of study before coming which impressed pranjol's father and intended to learn a lot more rajveer was still open to learning all these things so uh, you can prepare the answers of these two legends and how pranjol was not as excited as rajveer why he was not as excited as pranjol sorry rajveer and uh, that's it that's from this chapter and uh, so we have covered all three parts our next chapter is madam rides the bus this chapter is about an 8 year old girl who doesn't have any friends सो शी स्टैंड इन द डोर वे और वो वहाँ पर खड़े होकर आते जाते लोगों को देखती रहती है एंड वन शी सीज दैट वन शी सीज दोज पीपल कमिंग टू द टाउन जो बस में ट्रैवल करके आते हैं आफ्टर लुकिंग एट इट फॉर अ फ्यू डेज उसे एक अर्ज होती है शी गेट्स द डिज़ायर टू राइड द बस ओके सो द लेसन इज अबाउट एन एट ईयर ओल्ड गर्ल नेम वाली हु डिड नॉट हैव फ्रेंड्स टू प्ले विद so she would spend her time by looking at uh, uh, the outside affairs going on the street her favorite part was to look at the bus that passed by her village every hour us bus ko dekhne mein usko bahut maza aata tha jo har hour wahan se pass hoti thi it gave her endless joy to look at the new set of passengers each time the bus crossed why it was exciting for her because every time the bus came उसमें हमेशा नए पैसेंजर्स होते थे एंड शी गॉट टू सी ऑल द न्यू फेसेस ग्रेजुअली इवन शी विश टू ट्रैवल बाय बस सून द विश टर्न इन टू अ डिजायर एंड देयर फॉर शी मेड इट हर मिशन टू फुलफिल इट दैट डिजायर दैट शी हैड शी वॉन्टेड टू फुलफिल इट मुझे इस बट में बैठना है एंड आई वॉन्ट टू ट्रैवल टू द टाउन she started listening to the conversations between her neighbors who frequently traveled by bus and in process she would ask carefully questions here and there to collect more information now to travel she is an 8 year old girl so she need to have all the information so she listened to the people who traveled frequently there and she asked questions carefully taki koi us pe doubt na kare just like this she knew that the town is 6 miles away 
द टाउन वॉज सिक्स माइल्स अवे उसे क्या क्या इन्फॉर्मेशन कलेक्ट कर ली दैट द टाउन वॉज सिक्स माइल्स अवे एंड इट टुक द बस फोर्टी फाइव मिनट्स टू ट्रेवल वन साइड और एक साइड जाने के लिए द बस टुक फोर्टी फाइव मिनट्स वन साइड फेयर वॉज थर्टी पैसे मेकिंग इट सिक्सटी फॉर अ कम बैक एंड फोर्थ साइड नाउ टू गो टू द टाउन थर्टी पैसे था द फेयर एंड टू कम बैक इट वॉज ऑल्सो थर्टी पैसे सो इट वॉज इन टोटल सिक्सटी देर फॉर शी स्टार्टेड प्लानिंग एंड री प्लानिंग सो दैट शी कुड स्नीक आउट ड्यूरिंग हर मदर्स आफ्टरनून नैप एंड कम बैक विदाउट हर नोइंग एनी थिंग नाउ शी इज अ लिटिल गर्ल शी कैन नॉट गो आउट ऑन हर ओन बट शी वॉन्टेड टू सो शी मेड अ प्लान शी वेरी केयरफुली प्लान एवरी थिंग एंड शी प्लान इट लाइक टू गो एट द आर्स वेन हर मदर वॉज स्लीपिंग शी नीडेड टू सेव द मनी विच was not easy as she had to resist the temptation of candies peppermints and merry go rounds now to save the money for the fair she had to suppress all her desires all her temptations candies and merry go rounds and everything and she had to collect she had to save money finally she saved enough money and one fine day the brave 8 year old girl took the bus during it's not very busy hours she refused to take any help from the conductor or fellow passengers she was behaving like she is an adult and she refused to take any help from any person it was an amusing sight for everyone to see such a small girl all alone acting like an adult the conductor was of joking sort and thus referred to wali as a grown up madam now when she got into the bus she was acting like an adult and the conductor he was of joking sort and she called her madam and that's where uh, from our title we get madam rides the bus the conductor calling the girl madam short heighted wali would stand on her seat to be able to see clearly from the window while everyone advised her to sit down for her own safety each time someone would poke their nose in her business wali would get annoyed as she did not consider herself a child and when other people the other adults when they were concerned about her safety they she got irritated she did not want anyone else to tell her what to do because she considered herself an adult she did not want to be friends with an elderly lady who was worried about her because she thought she was not socially capable enough she enjoyed seeing what was going on outside and the sight of a running cow in the middle of a road was a, a plea a funny scenario to her when she was riding the bus she saw a cow running in the middle of the road and it was very funny to her upon reaching the town she refused to get down the bus because she was too afraid to do al- so alone while returning she carried extreme enthusiasm until she saw a cow lying lifeless on the road and that it was the same cow she saw earlier and now it was dead and lying uh, right in the middle and it was dead Wali got terrified at the fact that how a creature so full of life can instantly turn into something horrible. She sat down silently for the rest of the journey and uh, now she was not as enthusiastic as she was before. She was horrified and she was very silent throughout the journey. Upon reaching home, she uh, found her mother and aunt talking about endless possibilities in the world. And when she got home, she saw that her mother and her aunt they are talking and they are talking about the possibilities of world ke world mein kitni sari possibilities hain and when wali hears that she says yes she uh, she says she agrees and uh, the mother and the aunt they are very confused that how an 8 year old girl is saying that yeah there are uh, possibilities in the world so she says that she was casually agreeing to what her mother was saying there is no such thing as that she knows anything about it she is just casually agree her aunt then referred to wali as a no spoken child who acts like a grown up lady but only wali knew what she was referring to because after all no one knew about her bus journey as she was the only one who knew not her mother not her aunt so that's why she she was the only one who knew what she was talking about so from this chapter you can prepare the questions like uh, how was the journey why she wanted to ride the bus what were the 
particular reasons and what was uh, that incident jisse wali ka jo excitement tha jo enthusiasm tha wo bilkul khatam ho gaya and she became completely silent so all these questions you can prepare from this chapter and our next chapter is the sermon at banaras so this chapter is about gautam buddh and his early life and how he got uh, the enlightenment how he got enlightenment and he shared that enlightenment with the world and his first sermon after getting enlightenment when he gave his first sermon it was in banaras and that's where we get our title from the sermon at banaras gautam buddh was born to a north indian royal family as a prince and was named siddharth gautam earlier when he was a prince his name was siddharth gautam when he was 12 years old he was sent to a far away place to study hindu sacred scriptures and upon returning 4 years later he got married to a princess soon they both had a son they continued to live the royal life about for about 10 years so uh, he went to study and he came back he got married he had a son they were living a royal life everything was great but one day uh, the royals were shielded from all the unpleasant experiences of the world until one day on his way to hunt the prince met a sick man an aged man a funeral procession and a monk begging for alms so he was shielded from all the sufferings he did not know that world had sufferings like poverty and old age uh, diseases he did not know all that he was shielded from it so when one day he went hunting aur unhone sari cheeze ek saath dekhi ek ke baad ek dekhi that it affected him a lot these experiences acted as eye openers for him and thus he left all the royalty behind to seek a higher sense of spiritual knowledge so when he saw all these sufferings it was an eye opener for him he thought that uh, the royalty all i have is for nothing and he went out to seek enlightenment upon attaining salvation he began preaching and when he got salvation when he got enlightenment he sat under a tree and for several days he sat there and then he got enlightenment and the tree it's called the bodhi tree where he got enlightenment He gave his first sermon in the city of Banaras. There was a lady named Kisa Gautami, whose son had died. Now, when he was giving his sermon at Banaras, he gave his first sermon at Banaras. Now, there was this uh, lady, Kisa Gautami, and her son had just died, and she was going here and there, people to people, door to door, to ask for medicine for his son. People started thinking that the lady has lost her sense. One day she met a man who dis- directed her towards Lord Buddha who could possibly have a solution for her problem. Now she met a man he said I don't have a medicine for your son or a solution for your problem but I can send you to a person I can uh, main kisi ke paas tumhe bhej sakta hu jiske paas shayad tumhari problem ka koi solution ho aur usne Kisa Gautami ko Gautam Buddha ke paas bheja Buddha asked her to look for mustard seeds and the seeds must be procured from a house that had seen no death so Buddha asked her to get some mustard seeds lekin wo aise ghar se hone chahiye jahan kabhi kisi ki death na hui ho reinstated with hope kisa gautami once again went on a search from house to house but to her dismay she could not find mustard seed from house that would fulfill gautam's uh, gautam buddha's condition now there is no home in this world jahan pe kisi ki death na ho yo so kisa gautami she had a hope and she went from door to door looking for a home that w- there jahan pe kisi ki death na ho yo but there was no such home disheartened she sat at the edge of the road thus realizing how selfish she had been she became conscious to the fact that men were mortal and no one could escape the cycle of life that the cycle of life it goes on and that is common to all agar kisi ne janm liya hai then they are bound to die this was exactly what buddha wanted her to understand and that's why he wanted that's what he wanted her to understand that's why he asked her to go and get the mustard seed from a house that has seen no death 
According to Lord Buddha, feelings of grief and sorrow only increases man's pain and suffering, thus deteriorating his health. Therefore, a wise person, fully aware about nature's functioning, must not grieve at something bound to happen, and only then he can be happy and be blessed. So, uh, a wise person, who is a wise person, who grieve na kare, who ek grieving ko leke bahut time tak na rahe. Moving on. That's what Lord Buddha wanted everyone to understand. So from this chapter, you can prepare the Kisa Gautami's story about how she understood the cycle of life, how she understood that death is common to all and uh, about Gautam Buddha's early life, how he got enlightenment, what happened, what were the, what were, uh, the incidents that made him understand that there is a lot in the world and that's for this chapter our next chapter is the proposal it's a play where we have three characters Lomo, Chubuko and the daughter Natalia and the curtain rises with Lomo entering his neighbor Chubukov's house fully dressed up in his evening attire he's wearing this very formal evening attire and Chubukov is surprised to see him well dressed and asks him the occasion. Lomo reveals that he had come to make a request. Chubukov anticipates that he must have come to ask for money. Now when Chubukov asks him that uh, Lomo that what is the occasion, why have you come here? Then he anticipates, he guesses that maybe he has come for, come to ask for money. That's why he always comes. On being revealed that Lomo had come to ask for Chubukov's daughter Natalia's hand in marriage, Chubukov gets filled with excitement and leaves to call Natalia. But when Lomo reveals that wo Natalia se shadi karne ke liye hai, Chubukov gets very excited. Lomo is a 35 year old gentleman who suffers from palpitation, gets upset very easily and doesn't sleep well. He thinks that it is the best age for him to get married and he is happy that he has his mind made up about Natalia. Now these are the reasons for him to get married. Why Lomo wants to get married? He is already 35. It's a good age to get married and if he doesn't get married now, he will be unmarried for the rest of his life. And he suffers from several diseases like palpitation. He gets upset really easily and he doesn't sleep well. And he thinks that Natalia is the best match for him because she is good looking, she is well educated, she is a good homemaker and everything. So these are the reasons why uh, Lomo wants to get married to Natalia. According to him, Natalia is average looking and a good housekeeper. When Natalia arrives, Lomo begins to, uh, the conversation about how grateful and glad he is that both their families are on good terms since the very beginning. While continuing to talk about his land, he, see, he somehow mentions about Ox and Meadows, which earlier was a disputed property but is now his. So when they are talking, they are casually talking and this uh, incident comes up where he tells them that the oxen meadows, this particular land, uh, which was earlier in dispute, but now it's now his. Natalia couldn't believe a word he was saying because she believes that oxen meadows belong to her family. Now the dispute begins, the quarreling, the reason for their fighting, the first reason is that the oxen meadows, Lomo thinks that oxen meadows are his and Natalia thinks that it belongs to her family. Both of them enter into a heated discussion and act childishly when Chubukov enters just to get the conversation more heated. So when Chubukov enters, Natalia asks him that uh, father, jo oxen meadows hain, wo hain, tell him and he agrees that yeah, oxen meadows are ours and the, the argumentation that it got heated up. They shout and scream while Lomo suffers from extreme pounding of the heart and side pull and a numb foot. They throw Lomo out of the house and continue cursing him. While speaking ill of him, Chubukov unintentionally reveals that he had come with a marriage proposal for Natalia which surprises Natalia and she immediately regrets sending him out. Now uh, when they are arguing, argument ke baad, 
दे थ्रो लोमो आउट ऑफ देयर हाउस एंड अनइंटेंशनली चुब को नटालिया को बता देता है दैट लोमो उससे शादी करने के लिए आया था एंड नटालिया इंस्टेंटली स्टार्ट रिग्रेटिंग सेंडिंग हिम आउट एंड शी वॉन्ट्स हिम टू कम बैक and when domo returns natalia tries to deviate to another topic and start talking about shooting somehow they enter into an argument involving their dogs natalia feels that her squeezer is better than lomo's guess now the second argument the reason for their second argument is that they both think that their dogs is uh, better natalia's dog is squeezer and lomo's dog is guess and she thinks that her dog is better and lomo thinks that his dog is better they continue arguing when chubuko enters the scene only to make the situation worse again once uh, everyone gets hyper and lomo finally falls due to his palpitations even then his cursing continues when suddenly natalia notices that he is unconscious now because of all the arguments and uh, all those uh, shouting Lomo get the palpitations and he gets unconscious. They try to get water down his throat but end up getting unsuccessful and declares him dead. It is only when Lomo moves a little bit they feed him some water and Chubuko forcefully hands over Natalia's hand to him, gives his blessing and asks them to kiss. Now when lomo is unconscious they think that he is dead but when he moves that then chubuko is very happy that yeah lomo is alive and he quickly gives his hand in natalia's hand and they and he asks them to kiss and make up lomo still not fully conscious uh, doesn't understand what is going on when he finally comes to his senses he expresses his excitement and kisses natalia's hand natalia begin uh, being child as she is manipulates him into accepting that squeezer is a better than guess but lomo being adamant as he is refuses to accept it thus once again the quarreling continues now natalia is trying to manipulate him that her dog is better but lomo refuses to say that and once again they start quarreling over uh, their dogs so in this chapter you can prepare the questions like uh, what was the reason what were the reasons that lomo wanted to get married that he was 20, 35 years old already and he had palpitations and he thought that natalia was the best match for him and why why were they fighting the reasons for their arguments and uh, yeah that's it for this chapter and our next chapter is amanda by robin klein the poem amanda so this poem is about a girl who is very irritated and very tired of her mother constantly nagging her constantly telling her what to do and what not to do and she has this own world she has her own world and her fantasies and she uh, wants to escape the poem describes a girl named amanda and her mother who is nagging her for her mistakes she is first pointed out most probably by her mother for biting her nails so first of all her mother she tells her to not to bite her nails and for not sitting in the right posture the mother also feels that amanda sits in a very lazy manner to this amanda imagines herself as a mermaid so her first imagination is being a mermaid she wants to be a mermaid who lives a calm relaxing life in the beautiful green sea further she is nagged for not cleaning her room and shoes and also for not doing her homework so the general things that all mothers nag their children for she then imagines herself to be an orphan because she is now fed up of being watched by her parents continuously now she imagines that she is an orphan and she can do whatever she wants she ro- can roam in the streets and nobody will say anything to her because she is an orphan she says that she would have enjoyed her freedom then by making the patterns of her bare feet on the sand and would live a peaceful life next amanda is scolded for eating too many chocolate as she as it causes acne uh, or pimples 
she is also scolded for not listening to her mother so now amanda thinks of being rapunzel now her next imagination of is being of rapunzel and rapunzel is a character from a fairy tale and wants wants to live in a huge tower like her in the tower she will be alone and will live a peaceful life and will never allow anyone to come in now she wants to live in a tower and she wants to live there alone and she will not allow anyone else to come there finally the mother asks her to stop being moody because she doesn't want anyone to blame her for harassing her daughter at this time the poet has not written any reaction from amanda's side this con- uh, this constant nagging has made her so sad that she has even stopped to imagine herself as someone else now she has completely stopped imagining herself as someone else she is uh, very quiet now she used to do so in order to escape from the continuous harassment and dominance of her parents now she just wants everyone to stop nagging her to stop telling her what to do all the time she just wants peace and silence the literary devices that have been used in the poem are first is anaphora that's the repeated use of a word at the start of two or more consecutive lines for example did you finish did you tidy this is what you call an anaphora asonance the use of vowel sounds like thought told you your shoes the use of vowel sounds repetition repetition of a word for example amanda has been used several times here metaphor silence is gold freedom is sweet silence is said to be a glorious like golden color freedom is said to be sweet in taste allusion use of famous fairy tale character rapunzel allusion consonants use of uh, consonant sounds uh, in assonance we use vowel sound and consonants we use consonant sounds alliteration uh, alliteration stop that sulking the s sound the repetition of s sound rhyme scheme is a a b a c c c a a d a e e e a a f a g g g and a a h a in different stanzas okay now our next poem is animals by walt whitman in this poem in this uh, particular poem the poet desires to live with animals he thinks that animals are better than humans they have certain qualities that the humans they don't and that's why he likes animals better in this poem whitman compares a man to animals he is comparing men to animals it is the souls of animals that are meant to reflect the truth in humanity the central idea of this poem is to highlight the difference between human beings and animals the whole idea of this poem it to differentiate between animals and humans how they are different in the beginning both were similar in their innate goodness the man had lost it over the years uh, earlier in the beginning they both were same they both had those same good qualities but with time human beings they lost these qualities somewhere in the race of human civilization humans have lost their nature they have become self centered jealous restless unhappy and always dissatisfied about everything they grumble and crib about every issue they cry over their sins and look for ways to please god for their selfish motives so all these bad qualities that humans have the poet wants to say that these qualities the animals they don't have this they grumble and crib about every issue they cry over their sins and look for ways to please their god they want to please the other person they want to please their god for their sins they have lost their sound sleep and most of the time are unable to enjoy even small joys and happiness they are always in tension or they are all they always want something more they are always dissatisfied and that's why they don't enjoy little things in life humans have become a combination of complications contradictions and confusions animals on the other hand are peaceful self contained thankful and happy 
the poet des uh, desires to live among the animals because they do not complain about their condition like human beings now why the poet thinks that animals are better because they do not complain like humans do that's why he wants to live with them the animals do not have to bow to another of their kind they are all equal and they remain satisfied animals they are all equal they don't have a god to bow down to the poet has a deep desire to learn from animals because they do not have any kind of falsehood the poet is very surprised by their quality so uh, in this chapter the poet wants to say that animals are way better than humans because of the certain qualities the literary devices used in this poem are assonance the use of vowel sounds repetition the use of uh, the word long it's been repeated several times anaphora i word used at the start of two consecutive lines use of repeated words at the beginning of two or more consecutive lines is called anaphora and they do not they do not it comes in consecutive lines metaphor sweet Uh, sweat and wine refers to the cries and complaints of human beings the inner qualities of humans are referred to as tokens it were tokens it's supposed to be the qualities humans show personification the poem has uniform personification it has been personified alliteration repetition of initial consonant sounds alliteration for example they do not make me sick make me m sound repeat ho raha hai and here wonder where w sound repeat ho raha hai and here they get those tokens so the t the t sound is repeating okay so these are the uh, literary devices that has been used in this poem our next poem the tale of custard the dragon by ogden nash so it's a very light hearted poem the Uh, tale of custard the dragon it's a ballad and it's a very light hearted poem very humorous poem the tale of custard the dragon is a ballad it's a humorous poem about a cowardly dragon named custard custard is a pet of belinda now there is this girl belinda and she has several pets and custard is one of them and uh, he is supposed to be very cowardly he wants to be in his nice safe cage and he doesn't want to get out of it and the other animals they are teasing him for being so cowardly he is a dragon he is not supposed to be cowardly but he is and that's why they are teasing him custard is a pet of belinda a little girl who lives in a little white house with her pets she has a black kitten named ink a grey mouse named blink a yellow do dog named mustard and a cowardly dragon custard the poet says that all of them are very brave except the dragon everyone is brave all the animals the Bel belinda also they all are very brave others were described as brave and are compared with animals like bear tiger or lion but the dragon is very timid he is always very cowardly he always demands a safe place for himself all the other characters make fun of him but one night they are surprised by the entry of a pirate in the house now what happens is that a pirate he climbs up a window and he comes there and everyone is scared and everyone runs away koi basement mein chala jata hai koi kahin chala jata hai but uh, dragon the dragon custard all of them are frightened and starts hiding here and there but to everyone's surprise the dragon not only tackles him but also eats him up now the dragon who was supposed to be very cowardly was thought of as cowardly he is there to help belinda belinda when belinda asks for help all the animals who were so called brave they ran away but there was custard and he saved uh, belinda from the pirate but at the end they realize that they used to make fun of dragon because of his being timid so all of them suddenly start saying that they are more brave but when everything is over uh, when custard ate the pirate and everything was back to normal all the animals started saying that yeah i would have been twice as brave i would have been thrice as brave uh, if we wouldn't have been confused 
Here the poem has tried to say that sometimes a timid person is the actual hero in the toughest situations of life. We should not judge a book by its cover. When uh, Custard, he was supposed to be cowardly. He, he, uh, everyone thought that he will not be able to save Belinda, but he did. He was the one who came. And all the other animals who were so called brave, they ran away. They did not come back until the pirate was gone. Okay. So, in this poem, literary devices that have been used are repetition, repetition of the word. For example, little tickled him. Oxymoron, use of two words with opposite meaning. Oxymoron is what? When we use two words together, they have that have opposite meanings. For example, pet dragon. A dragon cannot be a pet, but here the dragon is a pet. Anaphora, repeated use of words at the starting of two consecutive lines. For example, uh, and a little and a relio, trulio, cowardly dragon. Repeated use of words at the start of two consecutive lines. As we say, refrain, repetition of a sentence again and again. When we repeat a sentence, and a relio trulio, this sentence has been repeated. Poetic license, relio trulio for real and true. The spellings have been changed to create a musical effect. Poetic license is when words get changed because just to create a musical effect. And uh, mouse hold has been called household. Uh, window has been called winda here. Simile, dog compared to mustard. A little yellow dog because he is yellow and he is compared to mustard. Dragon's mouth is compared with fireplace, mouth like a fireplace. Belinda is as brave as a barrel full of bears. Alliteration. Coward as she called him custard. The C sound. Belinda, brave, barrel, bear. B sound. Beard was black. B sound again. Alliteration. Metaphor. Chimney for a nose. His nose has been called as chimney. Assonance, the vowel, repetition of vowel sounds, use of vowel sounds. Uh, allusion, reference to any person or place. Uh, here, Perceval. Perceval was a knight in King Arthur's army and he ran away when he was supposed to fight. So, he was uh, custard what called Perceval and there is uh, allusion have been used. Personification. Ink, blink, mustard, they rudely called him. The animals are talking. Personification, onomatopoeia sound words to create dramatic effect. For example, giggle and weak. Consonants, use of consonant sounds. Imagery, an, imag uh, an image is created about the appearance of the pirate. Uh, the description of a pirate, he had guns in both hands, he had a wooden leg and everything. So, an image ban jati hai, there, that's what you call imagery. The attack by the dragon to express in a way to make an image in our minds. They have shown the reaction and actions made by the pirate on seeing the dragon that he uh, take out his flask and drink some liquid. Transfer epithet. Terif terrified yell. Now, it is not the yelp that's terrifying, it's the sound. It is not the yelping sound that is terrifying, but it is not a living thing, but that the dog is terrified by the pirate and yelps in the reaction, right? So, in terrified yelp, the yelp is not terrifying, the dog is terrified and in reaction he yelps. That's what you call a transferred epithet. So, I hope uh, this revision was very useful to you. Your exams are coming and good luck for that.